Warning! Do not attempt to replicate any of the tactics or strategies shown in this video in your local quick play match. Hello everyone and welcome to my first ever instructional video or guide or tutorial or I don't know what, what you call it on the internet but here we are. Today the focus is control, the game mode control in Crucible and how to play for the win. Obviously, if your team is 50 times better than your opponents and everyone has a 120 hand cannon and a Felwinter's Lie, you're gonna murder everyone else and you'll win immediately. So this is not a video for those who just have massive stacks and blast their opponents out of the universe. This is for those who want to play with their friends or who have a team already built and want to try and get better or for those who want to actually play stack versus stack and get the best possible chances at winning. Today we'll talk about three things. First, the theory of what is ideal play to win control. Second, a few tips for how to play and how to go about it. And finally, I'll give you loadout recommendations which you should aim for. Let's go. What is control? Well, it's a 6v6 game mode, as we have it in the game currently, where the main way you get points is by killing your opponents. Whoever either gets 150 points first, in Iron Banner that's 125, or when the time runs out, whoever has more points is going to win. So, the main idea of playing control is to get as many points as possible. Now, zones in control, there are three of them, they manipulate and they change how many points you get per kill. Without any zones, you'll get one point for, your, for a kill. One zone doesn't change that, it's still one point per kill. Two zones, however, which we call advantage, gives you two points for a kill, and having a power play, or in Iron Banner it's known as a hunt, will give you three points per kill. Clearly, capping zones is a vital step to winning control, but more on that later. What we have to uh, also remember is that there is an additional objective, which is heavy ammo, which will again give us a lot of kills, again giving us a lot of points. Um, finally, a thing to pay attention to is that since it is a 6v6 game and you have many teammates, but also your opponents have many opponents. Okay, that makes sense. So. Uh, we will be playing it slightly differently to 3v3 and we will get, be getting a higher kill volume than, say, in a Trials of Osiris match. First, we'll take a look at uh, the structure of a couple maps and how a usual game goes down. But first, let me just mention I got these uh, images you're about to see from the Steam page of Destiny 2 and the, the respective guy, guide on Steam was created by this guy called the Ducky. So many thanks for the maps. Now let's begin with the classic uh, Javelin 4 which I also played on uh, in my last video. And let's think about what happens uh, once the game begins. Okay, so six players, one, two, three, four, five, six, spawn on both sides where uh, these IS symbols are noted, meaning initial spawn. Uh, and they usually capture their main flags. They cap A, they cap C, and uh, the other flag remaining is at B, which is the clear, clear objective here. Also, across rocket to B is the heavy ammo, which, as I said, is the only other objective in control. So a usual match goes down, something like this. People from A rush out through pipes into the outer ring. Some people from C, they usually go to center pad or they go outside via these stairs to the deck and fight here at, uh, along the rock wall. Uh, usually the outside, meaning uh, this area, is taken by pulse rifles, sniper rifles, people looking to get into long range duels. And the inner circle is usually occupied by medium to short range weapons like SMGs, shotguns, and so forth. Now, uh, if at the beginning of the game, 
say you are one of these players let's say you spawned on a for example that's the better spawn which i'll get to shortly but say for argument's sake you're on a i don't know you have before seeing my video a little idea of how to win so i don't know you might have a hand cannon and a shotgun usually hand cannon shotgun players go somewhere here you hope that an opponent will peek somewhere here, here, maybe also here, and you're trying to get into a duel. Uh, should you die, say for example here, since the majority of your players are in the left part of the map, and since the spawns on this map are heavily weighted, it's most likely that you're going to spawn somewhere up here. Uh, uh, to the contrary, if you were on the other team and you, say, went out somewhere here and died, you were most likely going to spawn back here. This is what we call the initial state of any control match, where the spawns are still weighted one team on, on the left side and one other team on the right side. This is how javelin looks like the center of symmetry the axis of symmetry here is more or less this diagonal now if the majority of our friends pushes out towards the other side so say for example you went out here through glass maybe you captured B with your team and then you proceeded to push on into the back of generators and overwhelm your enemies from this side. Then the majority of your team would be on this part of the map and this is when a, a phenomenon we call spawn flips occur. What does this mean? Well, when the majority of our team is here, then the majority of the opponent th team will have to move out or they'll get constantly killed. So the other team will be required to spawn here. And the game knows that and it will, what we call, flip the spawns. There are some fringe situations here. So say that exactly as I've drawn three people go here and the other three uh, chill around here. Oops. Say the other three people go do something like this. And you have half of your team here, other half of your team here. Which is very difficult to defend because your half team needs to be strong enough to fight off all six opponents. Then there is this fringe situation where less heavily weighted spawns are used, say spawns around B. But we're not going to take a look at that here. Long story short, there are two spawns and when you push into the other one the spawn flips. Now, I'm going to make the argument this is a very bad idea. In in general, and unless you are, your team is significantly better than the opponents. Again, to understand this, let's think step for step how the game develops from an initial state. Say that we, we do the reasonable thing, we want to go for the third zo uh, zone, for, or for the zone advantage. So we cap A, and proceed through glass and through pipes, and we go into B. Now, if we control the majority of the map, say all of this area here, our enemy is, has a spatial disadvantage, which is good, meaning that we can predict that they're most likely going to spawn in this general area. However, if we proceed on and we, ex we, move, we keep moving out of our spawn and going for B and pushing towards the other side, well, in, eventually the majority of the players are going to start migrating towards the other side. However, this movement is not instant, and every time you kill an enemy, they're going to come behind you and stab you in the back. So you are giving up a positional advantage by pushing in forward. You're giving up control of the majority of the map, which here would be the left half, and getting just a tiny bit of control on C. And if your opponent is even remotely decent, they'll immediately capture A and stab you in the back and take B from you. So you've switched sides with your opponent, now the opponent having the advantage instead of you. So unless you are able to push into the other side so quickly that you take B and then you push into the other side so fast that your enemies don't have time to spawn behind you and take B from you, 
Taking the third zone is a bad idea. Going for the third zone is a bad idea. You'll get stabbed in the back and sandwiched in between in between two sides. Don't do it. And remember, it, one zone is no different than having zero zones. In both in the case of zero zones and one zones, you get only one point per kill. However, two zones are better than one, since you get two points per kill. So our advantage we would get, say if we took A and B, completely outweighs the potential gain of getting a power play for a few seconds before our enemy takes some position and shreds us from behind. If you find yourself getting teamed by the opponents a lot, and you find yourself fighting fights from the front and from the back, the probable reason why this is happening is that there is a spawn be in front of you and behind you. What do I mean? Let me explain that a little bit more detail. Say, for example, you went into B, but your team is very, very bad, and they all died here in the middle or outside. So suddenly, you have no one on the match, and you're in the middle here, which means that your team is occupying a very little amount of area. Say, just this bit. It's quite likely now that the spawns might flip, but you'll still have enemies dotted around in their initial spawn, now some of them spawning from behind. So you are going to get challenged from both sides at the same time. The reason why you are getting into impossible battles, the reason you are always getting third partied, is because your team has lost positional control. If your team controls exactly one half of the map, say this half, you will never be shot from behind, because your enemies are always coming from one side. And this idea brings us to a concept of what I like to call the frontier. Say that you and your enemies occupy two large bits of the map. The frontier is the small zone in between your two occupied areas where most of the fighting happens. So here I marked it in green. Obviously, usually the frontier is a very dangerous zone because you're going to get shot from multiple sides and the enemy is holding that zone very, very strongly. The battle develops by simply the frontier moving. So initially, you have exactly this bit and this bit controlled by the enemies, with the rest here being neutral zone, basically no, no man's land. Obviously, whoever is the first to get there will occupy it, but whatever. So, say the frontier is in the beginning, somewhere around here. Now, by pushing into B, say from A, we are bending that frontier this way. And now if I reuse red, we're extending our uh, area of control, our region of control, and moving the frontier towards the enemies. We are advancing. And this is where most of the fighting happens. And I said this is a, mostly a one-dimensional line, and you are not going to be getting shot from behind if you do this correctly. You want to make sure that this frontier is in a good spot for your team, and you do not want to cross it. Because as soon as this starts edging out the enemies, you'll get a spawn flip, which as I argued is very bad. Then you'll suddenly get two frontiers and you're stuck from two sides. And you have to uh, fight an impossible battle. So always be aware of where this frontier is and always stick close to it, defending it. So let's think about Javelin in this concrete sense. Where would... Where, where should a team who spawns on A initially ideally fight? to control the majority of the map, say both A and B, like I illustrated here. Well, how do we sprinkle our players around? Probably we want two players here, maybe one player to patrol this area, since it's a very small area, one player there, and likely even the full three players here, since you're defending a zone against constant rushes from three sides. And you're defending uh, the objective. Two here to make sure you don't get flanked from behind. One here just to tell some ba uh, tell a buddy, yo, come help, people are pushing at pipes. And the majority here, because here you have a sight line on almost all of the map. And you're controlling uh, the objective. You don't have a sight line towards outside, but outside doesn't have objectives, m mostly. If heavy comes around, you might want 
one or two of these players chilling on B to advance through pipes uh, and uh, th at rocket to just just barely move the frontier into including the heavy ammo spot, like something like this. But generally, don't push in too far. On almost every map, there is one advantageous spawn which you are praying to Iron Jesus to get off the start of the map. As I've been drawing on Javelin, that's the A spawn, since the path towards B from the initial spawn is shorter and is much, much less risky. To get from the initial spawn of C to B, we need to go all the way around here which either involves us putting ourselves in the outer ring or taking a detour via generators. So either we are risking getting shot by the other team or we are taking a detour and being late. Which is why a spawn flip in very controlled circumstances can be a good thing. Now, I remember I did tell you that a spawn flip is bad, but if your position is already horrible, you want to try and switch it up to get a better one. So that's the only attempt you should undertake to flip spawns is when your position is so horribly bad that you cannot make progress. Then you would collect your team and push, say, here with as many players as possible to bust through 2A. Or if you are very, very lucky and your team is slightly better than the opponent, you might even be able to hold C and B together. But that's quite difficult and not easy to do. It's easier here to defend A and B because we have a very small area where we are exposed to enemies while being able to control the majority of the map. We have this area where we are exposed to enemies, this, 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 and this. Whereas the sea spawn has a much bigger area. It's this, this, and this, which is much worse. And it's more difficult to play around. We're going to take a look at different maps and I'll show you which are the two zones which you should hold. Again, avoid getting the third one because you'll flip spawns and give up your positional advantage. You want to flip spawns if your position is bad. And when you do get a spawn flip, that's when you're going to get shot from behind. Okay. Let me show you another fan favorite map, Dead Cliffs. Now, everyone loves to play this map for scrims, for everything, but most people don't even know what they're doing. So let's analyze this. Here are the initial spawns, there and there. This is uh, where C is at, this is where A is at, and this is where B is at. Uh, as you can tell, the outside lane is very long, so usually people with pulse rifles or long-range weapons try to occupy this lane and this lane, because you can see very far from it and get long-range duels. People looking for shorter range duels often uh, like this area of the map, where the fights are closer. Okay, let me test you. Where would you prefer to spawn on dead cliffs? Everything I've said standing. Okay, so let's analyze. You might think, okay, A looks quite good, right? So we get a zone immediately, we have a lot of cover, and... The, the area where we're, front, uh, where we're facing the enemy is basically just this, this, and this. Which is quite small compared to all of this for the opponents, you might think. However, the problem is that you must realize that these two rooms offer no protection from danger outside. This is one of the factors which can lead to a position being bad. So, if you think about it, say your team occupies this half of the map, and the opposing team occupies this half of the map, the fight happening just for B, and you're stuck in A. Now, your opponent will only need to move a very short distance to be able to cover all of your exit points, and all of the points which you might try to use to get B. This is why... Actually, it's quite bad to be stuck in A. You have very little, you need to move a lot to be able to confront your enemy, and your enemy has an easy escape. Also, your enemy has a very long sight line on A, 
Remember that I pointed out that snipers and pulse rifles love to use this lane? Well, it's not too hard for an enemy to go get from here to here. And if you spawn here, and the spawn being very heavily weighted, you're immediately getting shot from here. Which is a very, very bad thing. Also, if you spawn somewhere here, you're being shot at basically immediately with little to no cover. This is why on dead cliffs you want to get C and B. This is the better, the best position for you is this, with the frontier, as I put it, being here. If you're spawning on A, forget about your zone, push to C, and then try to get C and B. Let's go another one. Next one is burnout, also a fan favorite. Now, which spawn would you prefer to have? Which of the sides of the map, this or this, would you prefer to have? Here is heavy. Um, which side would you prefer? Well, here it's quite obvious. You would prefer A and C. Why? Because actually, you're able to keep a very small bit of the map for yourself, while seemingly giving your opponent all this area to work with, if you keep the frontier at this position here, while you keep everything you need to win at your doorstep. You have two zones, meaning you are likely to win. You have a zone advance, you have heavy here, and you have a very small, small amount of area you need to defend against enemies. Whatever your enemies do here, they cannot possibly break through these three points, which is why the A and C zones are the best on burnout. Even if you have a long-range weapon, trust me, switch the weapon, don't play outside. You will lose if you play outside. And the final one, banner fall. So here is A, here is C, here are the initial spawns, here is heavy and B, basically on top of each other. Which side would you prefer here? Well, this is actually a very nasty question here, and the reason why this is difficult is that the map is symmetric, it's symmetric around this axis. There's almost no difference to the side of the maps. I say almost because there are some differences. For example, sniping from here to here, you have a very, very, very tight angle which goes through this window, across this edge, and snipes whoever is standing on this platform. So this might be an advantage you enjoy, and this is why you might want to cap C. But also A has some other advantages, mainly this spawn, if you get caught in your spawn unprotected, it's slightly easier to defend. All in all, in this map, it's very difficult to have a positional advantage, because both positions are good. So you want to keep the frontier looking something like this. Okay, here you want to control just a small majority of the map, so that your opponents can keep spawning here. So this is as far as strategy goes. Let me just reflect quickly for you. Don't push the third zone unless your current position is very, very bad and you want to change it. Keep two zones, keep the better two zones, and don't move because you're giving up as soon as you do move. So here we are at the end of the video. That was how to develop a winning strategy in control. Since the video has become already more than 30, 22, 23 minutes long, I've decided to cut it here. I will make more videos, of course, on the tips and tricks I promised and the loadout recommendations. I'll also provide you with um, live commentaries, which will show you exactly how to play for the win, both as a solo player and in a stack. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.